Hello and welcome to another installment of Comparative Reasoning. I am your host, Cedric Kennedy. And and you know what? I I admit sometimes I miss doing that intro. And I'm going to give full disclosure. This is my third time trying to do this video. And every single time I try to do it, um, it's it's difficult because I know most people won't see things the way I do. I understand that I have a relatively unique uh, lens when it comes to things like this. I think about how things were uh, when they were told and through movies or through stories, through literature and things from so long ago. I think about how things were just 10 years before I was born. I think about hearing the things about that happened during my early childhood that were clearly away from me. I think about the subtle things that I went through. I think about the things that I watched growing up, what I've seen and been exposed to, witnessed and experienced through elementary school, middle school, high school. I think about so many, so many things. And because of that, it leads me to conclusions i use tangible uh observations experiences to come to my conclusions and (laughs) honestly for those who are selective in their logic my experiences don't need to be peer-reviewed because no one should be traumatized or frustrated or angry by things that they made up just because they could. Now, that doesn't mean there are people out there that don't make things up just to be part of the crew. Now, I get that. Some do. They don't want to be left out. I understand that. But when it comes to this Ahmad Arbery situation, this terrorist attack, this this murder, um... I'm going to have to be honest with you. I'm going to to shoot straight. And I'm sure a lot of you will be upset. But if you find yourself different in what I'm saying, please leave a comment. Let me know how you feel. Timestamp it. Um, So with that. uh, So I um, when I first heard about it, I felt nothing. And today I feel nothing. When I, and there will be nuance about this, when I saw the video after some days, I saw it and I felt nothing. That doesn't mean I'm apathetic. It doesn't. Um, And you could say otherwise. But there is something that goes on in all of us. And it's not desensitization and it's not feeling like it won't happen to me. It's not thinking that it won't happen to someone that I know, someone that I love, someone that I knew. It's 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 feeling defeated. Individually, what could I do? What could I say? People don't listen to me when I mean that. I mean, if I say try this instead of that, it's not going to happen. If I say, have you thought about voting this way instead of that way? It's not. And when I say happen, I mean thought of. I mean legit, honestly thought of that could help you persuade yourself or something like that. So this whole thing, I didn't have to analyze it because the truth is. If if if, if black people decided that they were going to stop being victimized. And they're going to go on the offense. And they're going to start killing white people just as readily as they're being killed, have been killed and will be killed. The wrong white people are going to get get killed. They're going to get hurt. The ones that are not racist, the ones that are not apathetic, those are the white people that are going to get killed. And I mean. That happens 100% of the time. The ones that get hurt, 
never go after the ones that hurt them. So their trauma is kept inside. And they take it out on any and everything that's not the ones. Because that, that fear is strong. And to a lot of people, they don't understand. The reason these racist white people aren't getting what they want. And this is, there's some ugly truths and this is one of them. The reason these racist white people, these confederate hee-haw, hillbilly ass motherfuckers ain't getting what they want. Is because black people are outright deathly afraid. Black people know. They know. No matter what they do that's justified in any retaliation, any just retaliation, they'll be seen as the perpetrator. They'll be seen as the instigator. They will be handled with absolute, outright, unmitigated force. They will be handled with extreme prejudice, as if that already isn't happening. So, what, 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 what do you do? You know, you got slavery. Imagine what it takes to break someone down into changing their name, acting accordingly to what you want, and then making them live exceedingly subhuman. I mean, dogs and roaches lived better than slaves. Just think about that. Think about what level of defeat it takes for someone to accept that lifestyle without fighting back. Think what level of defeat it takes for someone to make sure that Stockholm Syndrome is their way of life and they make sure that no one else can rise up against Massa. Just think about that. So for hundreds of years, black people try to find their way. These racist white people, these people in Congress, these people in the Senate, these people are all levels of, of government, social and otherwise. All these people, descendants of slave owners, descendants of just hatred. And you got those that rebel, the very few that rebel and all they want to do is just ha have a good life. And if they meet some black people, then cool. You know, why can't we just, you know, literally, why can't we all just get along? And those white people, they can't get their wish. They can't be happy. They can't just live life and just hang out with, with, with black people and don't even see black anymore, just see a person. They can't do that because the black people look at them and wonder what the fuck is up with you. They look into the eyes of someone that see them as the enemy. And see, that's, that's, that's the problem. Because you got those rebellious black people that can't wait for some shit to jump off. But those same rebellious black people are the same black people that when the shit jump off, they're going to run away. They're going to run away. Because they're not going to get away with self-defense. They're not going to get away with, I killed them when I saw them draw their, gun, their guns, so I killed them. Now, he was drawing, now, you know, yeah, there could be some kind of, there will be a thing where someone said they were drawing the gun to show it off to you so you could, you know, so you could compare notes. But no, you know the truth. Some white dude in some truck show up in a black neighborhood, gets out and pulls out a gun. That's not, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not for showing it off. That's for showing up. That's what that is. And so you've got these people that this is just life, you know. That's life. In in every era, our era, that begins roughly 1930. It don't matter when, no matter where, black people try to stay in their own groups. You know, because that's what white people wanted. Stay in your area. Stay in your community. Stay there. Out of our way. Stay out of good people's way. So, black people did. But white people found a way to go in there and ruin shit because they had to. You know, you want black people to stay away from you. So, you know, well, why can't you have your own community, your own place and leave us the hell alone? OK, then. So black people, they had their Black Wall Street. They had their Tulsa. They had their thing. You couldn't let them have that either. Black people wanted their rights. They wanted to be seen as equal. White people didn't want to want them to have that.
So, you know, the Black Panthers, they did their thing. White people made sure to go ruin that, you know. So, black people have known you're the bad guy. You'll be hurt. You'll be killed. You'll be destroyed. Black people are demonized all over the place by every means necessary. So, what's a black person going to do, huh? Really think about it. What's a black person going to do? There's nothing a black person can do that won't be seen as a crime. Whistling at a white woman, you know, that got you killed. Even though whistling was just simply his way of, I need help, or where's mom? But the white woman had to say, hey, he was whistling at me. Now, there was no such thing as, hey, kid, don't be doing that. That's rude. No, had to kill him, slaughter him. I mean, just think about that. You could say, well, that was so long ago, it doesn't really matter. Just a few years ago, our time, little black kid trying to play with some older white kids, trying to just play with them. White kids put a noose around them, hung them up, hung them up on the tree. That's our time. You know, kid going home from the store, be with his family to watch some TV and gets hunted down and assaulted. And when he fought back, he got shot and killed. And for months, that kid that got shot and killed was seen as the perpetrator. He didn't have the gun. He was even heard on the phone trying to get away. He was heard screaming for help. But yet, he's the perpetrator because that's how media wants you to hear it. Racist media. I want you to think about that. And when you can't just be a civilian and killing black people, be a cop. Well, some kid got a toy gun. Cops get called, roll up like it's Hawaii Five O, but then shoot them like they're clean as wood. And didn't even get out the car. Car didn't even start rolling, shooting, kill a 12-year-old kid with a gun that was trying to wave at him. Cops are your friends. You're taught that in school until they kill you. You know, cop tells a girl... You know, ask a girl on the street corner, you know, hey, what you doing? And then you in the street corner. It's a sidewalk. It's the sidewalk. Broad daylight. What you doing? You know, what you doing out here? She's scared. She ain't saying nothing. So what they do, turn around. And instead of giving her a pat down like they should, they molest her. They fill her up. The mother comes out the house scared. See, they thought they were dealing with some teenager. No, they were dealing with a 12-year-old girl. Thought she was somewhere in that 17 year old range. The mother comes out raging, angry. Cops pull their guns, tell she to lay down and deal with it. And she had no choice. Crying, pissed, angry, and tried to watch her daughter get felt up by these cops who say they're checking on her to see if she has any weapons. How long does it take to check somebody? In fitting clothes to make sure they don't have any weapons. You know, this is our time. This is our time. This is this era. How 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 bad is it when someone in a in a car says, I'm gonna be I'm gonna do lawfully, I'm gonna explain that I do have a weapon, it's registered, it's licensed, but it's not on me, it's in the glove compartment. Cop freaks out. And decides, hey, you need to get your seatbelt off you. And the guy says, hey, I, I don't want to move. And he says, undo the seatbelt. So he undoes the seatbelt. Guy gets shot. Girlfriend sits next to him and has to sit there and watch this guy get, watch her man get killed. It has to remain, remain calm. Bullet could have hit this, the child in the back seat. Cop tries to cop's plane to say it's not his fault. This is this is this is this time. This is our time. These are the years current that we're all living in. Those that are left alive. We get slaughtered. So have I gone through enough? You know, what about the guy that broke up a fight so the police wouldn't bother anybody? That's what he did. Break up a fight so, so the cops wouldn't have to arrest anyone. The cops show up and surround him. Block his way, sneak up from behind, choke him out. 
Now, while the media said that he was a bad dude, he was angry and all this other stuff, the other media was saying that he was just selling loose cigarettes, but he wasn't. Not that day. De definitely not that time. Not selling loose cigarettes. He broke up a fight. He was trying to do the right thing. What about the 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 the, the guy that uh the black guy that subdued a guy with a gun that was going to shoot people in the mall, kill everybody in the mall. He subdued him, had a gun, held him down. They called the cops. Cops come in, shoot the black guy with no questions asked. This is our time. That's what this is. So now you got someone that just jog jogging down the street and he just happens to just, you know, be black. And they just, and these white racist people decide to just corner him. Fight him. He tries to fight. He tries to save his own life. They kill him. They kill him. Didn't see anybody wretched in pain or anything like that. No, nah, then videotaped it so everyone could see it. Cops killing black people, get away with it. Vigilantes killing black people, get away with it. Black people got nothing. I want y'all to understand that. But black people don't have anything. We're so afraid of white people in this country that we predate on each other. We will we will hurt each other. We will tell each other not to go anywhere. Don't do anything. Don't hang around other black people. They'll get you killed. And as sad as it is, it is true in those tiny little areas where it can happen. Because black people have had the worst luck on this planet in the United States of America. Don't give you anything. Don't let you amount to anything. Share crop the shit out of you and then decide to tell you that you need to pull yourself up and stop being so downtrodden. Stop, you know, relying on the government to, to pay anything for you when you will not allow us to get anything for ourselves. Won't let us do anything. Can't wait to fire us from any job. And then the jobs that we can do, you move them overseas and then. You know, you, you what are we going to do? You know, now, granted, a lot of things that I'm saying is it affects all of U.S. inhabitants. And I get that I'm focusing on black people right now because and I need y'all to hear me. White people don't walk down the street wondering if that white person is going to kill them just because they look different. They don't. They don't. The people that get killed just by how they look, basically gay people, black people. That's it. That's mainly it. Now, that don't mean others don't. Mexicans get killed. Native Americans get killed. So they get they they get kidnapped and put on the sex trade, you know, sex trafficking and whatnot. No one gives a damn about that. You know, Mexican females that happens to this, that happens the same thing to them and their young girls. They get kidnapped and put on this uh, sex trafficking and whatnot, but no one cares about that. See, what these white racist people want? They want that civil war. They want it bad. They want black people to take up arms, go outside, and just start shooting some white people because they know. The white people that want this, they know that once that happens, they got the free range to go out and indiscriminately kill any black person they see. And they will go out with the, the hollering, the hooting and the guns blazing and the Confederate flag and every iota of round of ammo they have. And black people know that black people ain't got that in their house. They might have you might find the very few with an automatic weapon. And you're going to find some with a handgun. And you'll find some, you know, with a semi-automatic. You know, there will be a gun, maybe. And so you can say that. But when it comes to white people, 
I've noticed that white people just got guns all over the place. And that's not all of them. And I'm only talking about those racist, confederate, apathetic white people. I'm grouping those people, the apathetic and the, the confederate. Those people. They can't wait. They can't wait for that. And black people are defeated. We're not going to rise up. There is no rise up. In order to rise up, you have, you have to actually be as one people. That's when black people did rise up. When you had that one person or a few people or, or, or those 10 or 12 leaders in their own areas that said we need to band together and do right by our people. Ignore what those racists, what, what they call them back then, Pekka Woods. You, you know, you, you, you ignore what they would say. Oh, no, we got to we got to band together. We need to shop black, be black, all of that. That's what they that's what their rhetoric was. That's what they they were espousing. And it worked. Until white people came in and broke it up, whether it be the police, the, the, the federal uh, police, whether it be, you know, just some social vigilante group or the. The the KKK it didn't matter. You're not going to let black people shore up and do what they got to do to make it and survive and be happy. You're going to fight that tooth and nail. But I'll be honest with you. Thinking about this, this just came to mind. What happens if there was someone to organize? What if there was someone to organize and say, we're not going to shoot any white people? You know? Yes, they're going to, and I want y'all to hear me. I hope you're listening. Because, see, they're going to say, listen, these racist white people, not the good ones, because there are going to be some good ones in there with those black people. And they're going to be called brothers. They're going to be called sisters. They're going to be called equals with those black people. Because black people can't wait to just welcome some damn body and be all kind and happy to them only to get screwed over. It keeps happening. It won't stop. Just as much as it's just almost as equal as the, the people, the black people that are so scared, they're going to just, you don't belong here. Get the hell on away from us. But what happens if someone does organize and they say, black people, we're going to govern the fuck out of our areas. We got a black community, right? Then let's be a community. Let's organize. Let's find political awareness and let's vote for those that's going to look out for black people primarily. And in your state, in your county, in your town, in that city, in your groups, I don't care if it's public housing or not, you get everyone to vote for these black people. And these black people are going to be propped up with money. It's going to be word of mouth. And it's going to be on the Internet. And that's what they're going to do. Just imagine if this happens. And they say, vote for this black person, vote for that black person. It don't matter if it's a man or a woman, transgender, gay, lesbian. It don't matter. What matters is the fact that it's going to be black. It's going to be pro-black. It's going to be not anti-white. It's going to be pro-black. And what's going to happen is you're going to see these seats getting taken. Because they're going to they're gonna make sure to vote every little time they can. It don't matter if it's a special election or anything like that. It's going to be a vote. And when they vote, you never know how it's going to turn out. But when you start seeing that shit that happened when Obama and Hillary became neck and neck in that race, in their race, and them white people on, them, them racist white people on TV ask that question, where did Obama come from? You ever seen the butler? Yeah. You're in the room, but you have to behave and make them feel like you're not even there, that you're invisible. And Obama, even though he was loud, even though he was out there and he was doing his rallies and speeches, he was not seen as if he wasn't there. And so what happens? What happens when someone, when the, 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 the white paid media says, where did these black officials come from? When did they get voted in and who voted for them? 
because in that is going to expose even more horrific truths. Because then you're going to see more feds. You're going to see more people coming in and trying to figure it out and dismantle it. And you're going to hear about people taking over. Yeah, they're taking our freedoms. You're going to hear that talk from those racist white people. Because then racist white people are the first ones to holler about freedom while they oppress everybody else. This has been Cedric Kennedy for Comparative Reasoning. Thank you for listening.